Kanuva Sola. I greet you in the name of Jesus. And my name is Klus Wiens, as he said. You know, we just came out of the prayer room and I came and sat down beside my son. He's three years old. You know what he said? He looked at me and he says, Botov, Papa? I said, yes. He says, God bless you. It's a three-year-old son. I've never heard that from him before, that he said it himself, as that nobody told him to say that. He just said that to me. It broke my heart. I want, I'm here tonight to tell you that God did not reform my life. He transformed my life. He made a new man out of me. And I will share that um, slowly. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you so much for praying for my dad. I think I called Henry a couple of times and asked him if he would maybe announce it to pray for my dad. And I thank you so much that you did because he passed away five weeks ago. And he got saved four months ago, and he was 64 years old. And I praise God for that. We prayed for him lots. My mom said now when he passed on, she said to me, I've always prayed for him and prayed for him that God would not take him out of this world because he was a drunk. That God would not take him out of this world <clears throat> drunk or non-born. And she says, I got lucky. God saved him, and he did. And tonight I got the privilege to tell you that he got saved. I'll just tell you the, the, the conversation I had with my dad um, a month before he died, or ma a month before he passed away. And uh, we went to Mexico, he had cancer, and we were there for a week, and I didn't know, okay, how do I confront my dad? How am I going to talk to my dad? He's 64 years old. I'm 28. And I'm the youngest one in the family. And I'm going to preach to him. I'm going to talk to him about God. I tried it twice in my life. And he got really mad at me. And uh, so. And everybody was coming to visit him. And, and, and you know so. And I thought I cannot leave Mexico. Without knowing if my dad is saved or not. I have to know this. And, and lots of people that came and visited him wanted to know if he was saved. Everybody was questioning, is he saved? Is he not saved? Like, where is he standing with God? Nobody knew. And uh, so anyways, I, uh, on the last day, or the second last day that we were there, I ran into my cousin. I was going for a walk and I met him on the road. And I started talking to him. And I think this was God's doing and that's why I want to share it to you or share it with you. I think that was God's doing because I had prayed already, how can I talk to my dad? How can I con uh, confront him? Or am I saying it right? Because my English is not the best. So I hope you're, you're not going to expect some fancy t uh, speaker here tonight. But anyways, and, and you know, so I talked to my cousin and his dad passed away. Uh, a, is it a year and a half ago or two years? I'm not 100% sure. He passed away. And then he asked me, he said, so have you talked to your dad about salvation already? I said, no, I haven't. Do you know where he's standing? I said, no, I don't. And he says, how come you don't ask him? I said, I want to, but I said, I don't know how to approach him. I, I, I don't know how to, do, you know, like, because I don't know how he's going to take it. And he said, to, and he looked at me and he says, you know what, Nick, Clues, he said, I think that you would be the right guy to talk to him. And I said, what makes you say that? He says, because before my dad died, I heard him telling my dad, I was in another room, I heard him say to my dad, Ans Klus, des wertlich war er And I'm like, what? My dad said that? And I have called my dad lots of times. I talked to him. And when I would hang up the phone with him, I said, God bless you. If it has touched him as much as it just touched me when my son said that to me. 
I can just see how important it can be for a son to say to his dad, God bless you. And so, okay, I thought, man, I, I could see that there's a door open. The next day, we were getting ready to leave. And I sat down beside my dad with my Bible in my hand. And I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, I know I'm a lot younger than you are. And you're a lot older than I am. And I know I'm your youngest son. But I have, to, I have something to ask you and I want to know this. I said, Dad, can you truly tell me that you are born again? And he says, yeah. I'm like, what? Yes. I said, so you're telling me that you are a Christian? He says, yeah. So, 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 so you're telling me that you are a child of God? He says, yeah. I said, tell me, tell me, Dad, how did this happen? And he told me. I said, Dad, when did this happen? And he said, when I talked to him, he said, see, I don't know exactly what time, but I think when I talked to him, that was probably around two to three months before, but we kind of figured that was about four months before he passed away that he got saved, somewhere around there. So he told me anyways, the time, not the exact hour, minute, just the time where he accepted Christ. And I said, Dad, so what brought you so far? And he says, well, you know, this one day God just, just came right close to me and, and, and it get, just really hit me. And he says, and I, and I, I did it. He says, I, I accepted the Lord. And I said, so you are telling me that you asked Jesus to come into your heart? And he says, yeah, I did. Wow. I said, were you a Christian two years ago? He says, no, I was not a Christian two years ago. I'm like, wow, I believe this. And then I asked him, so dad, have you thanked God already that he saved you? And he says, I do it every day. And I'm like, wow, praise God. And I said to him, I said, can I read a Bible verse, to, a couple of Bible verses to you and explain something to you? And he says, yeah, sure. You know, in the last, the last while, we noticed how he was hungry for the word of God. How he was enjoying, they had Bible study there every Monday since, you know, like, uh, um, since that he got born again and he got, and then, and then after he got born again, he got sick and they had Bible study every, every Monday night there. And then there, there was a couple of times that it didn't work out and then he was already calling my oldest brother and he says, you know, are, are we having Bible study on Tuesday then or what? Yes, on Tuesday. We'll come out. Okay, good. And he just loved it. He loved the singing and he loved just Bible. He loved the Bible study. And, and, and it was so glad to see. And my mom today now too. So she's so relieved and, and so peaceful because she knows now where he is. That she prayed for so long that she wanted him to go to heaven, not to hell. And uh, so... Um, So that, that, uh, that was a, a big privilege to me and, and it made me really, really happy to see that, that he got born again. And then I read, a, I read a couple of verses to him and that was in Luke chapter 15 from 11 to 32. It's about the lost son. And I'm sure you all know about it. And I said to him, I shared this with him. I said, have you ever read that the son said that I'm going to go home and this is what I'm going to tell my father. I'm not going to read it here. But this is what I'm going to tell my father. And I'm going to tell my father to make me one of your servants. And I said to my dad, have you ever noticed when he got home he didn't? And he didn't. I said, have you ever noticed he, if he first he said he was going to tell him to make me one of your servants. And when he got home, he didn't. And what I see in that, why didn't he? Is because when he was still out there, there was a little bit of selfish. He says, I'm going to tell my dad what I want to do and how, where he's going to put me. See, I'm going to tell my dad what position I want to have. So I want to be his servant. When he got home, he did not say it. And I see it this way because he completely humbled himself and gave him over to the father. And, and just basically did not tell the father Okay, I want to, you know, like, and if I turn this into a Christian, uh, you know, like, I'm not going to tell God what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, what I'm going to do. Here's my life. You do with what you do with it, what you want. 
it's yours. So I think when we, when we are in that position that we still want to tell God what we're going to do and what we're not going to do, then I have a question about our salvation. <laughs> and so I explained it to him, and, and he enjoyed that. And after that, I gave him a hug. I said to my dad, I love you. And I said, we probably will never see each other again out here, but we'll see you in heaven. He broke down completely. And we left there, and, and not too long later, about a, it was a month later, one day in the afternoon, I got a phone call. Probably, it was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was from Mexico, and when that phone call came in, I knew what it was before I answered. And my brother said, he says, Dad passed away. He's gone. I miss my dad. Even, even if my dad was a drunk his whole life, and even if he never took very much time from me, but I love him. And I wish, I wished so much, I wanted so much, my children to get to know my dad. I would have just liked it. To worship God together with my dad. I got a little bit, of, just a little chance to do that. We got and, and we prayed together just before we left. We pr also prayed together. And it was a wonderful time. And I believe that a big thing that what changed my dad's life was... I think a part of it was my testimony. And if, if it wouldn't have been for the Lighthouse Gospel Church in Kurtzville, then I would have probably never shared my testimony somewhere in a church and I would have gotten recorded and my dad would have been able to listen to it. And he listened to it. My mom listened to it. Because my mom listened to it a couple of times in the house. My dad heard it and he listened to it too. And I think that opened some some of his eyes and his heart, that he began to understand salvation, I think, a little bit better and a little bit deeper. Because why am I telling, why am I saying this? How, why can I say that my, that my testimony, and it isn't really my testimony, it's Jesus' testimony, but why can I say that it has part on it? Because he said, to, what he said to that man, Ans Klus, es wahrlich wahrer Geburt, our son is really born again. That tells me something. It spoke to him. And my mom, she said later on now that she told me that my dad a couple of times said that he was so happy, so happy to see his son becoming a Christian. They thought they, have lo they had lost me. My mom thought they had lost me. So the word of God is very, very, very serious to me. Ever since I got born again, and I looked into the Word of God, I started reading. In the beginning, I got really frustrated because I couldn't read. I didn't ever had really good schooling, and I would just close the Bible and I just throw it to the side and I said, that "I can't read. I can't get it." Like it just. And then five minutes later, I'd be sitting there again. I said, "God, if you want me to understand this, you'll have to help me." And I'm just sharing how I was. And you can you could ask my wife. She knows. But I began to, to try and try again and again and again. I never gave up. And today I can read enough that I can understand what God is trying to tell me through the Bible. <laughs> and uh, so there's a few Bible verses that I would like to read and just share a little bit how I feel about them. And then I'll share my testimony. In uh, John chapter 3 verse 4 verse 34 I will see my Bible is German so you have probably an English Bible I will read it in German and then I'll try to uh, explain it in English it says dann der dann der den Gott gesandt hat redete die Worte Gottes denn Gott gibt den Geist nicht nach Maß it says here that um that God does not give the Spirit by measure. 
And I, I, I hear this oftentimes that people believe, you know, that, that God just the, fills us with the Spirit a little bit, and another little bit, and another little bit, and then for all of a sudden we're full. <clears throat> I don't understand the Bible that way. I believe you either have the Spirit or you don't. That's what I believe. The difference is this, and you're, you're probably thinking, okay, well, how come that person is led so much more by the Spirit than that one? It's because that one is humbling himself and that one is not. It all depends how much we humble ourselves and let the, the Spirit of God lead us and guide us. That is how much fruit we're, we'll be able to see, right? That's, what, that's how I believe it. And, and so, in another verse that I want to read is John chapter 4, verse 9. And where it says this, Und zu der Frau sprach sie, Nun glauben wir nicht mehr an deine Rede willen, wir haben selbst gehört und erkannt, dass dieser wahrhaftig der Retter der Welt, der Christus ist. Und weißt du, Vielleicht sagen ihr alles Christen, vielleicht sagen ihr alles wahre Geborene, die Kinder Gottes sind, ich wünsche euch hier. Aber eine Frau hat euch hier. Was kann ich sagen? Kann ich bloß sagen, ich habe gehört, dass Jesus ist der Rara? Oder kann ich sagen, ich habe es erfahren, dass Jesus ist mein Rara? Was ist das für dich? Also bloß dem, was du gehört hast, dass du den Rara nicht, oder ist das dem, was du selbst erfahren hast? Und ich wollte Ihnen sagen, von den vielen Menschen, ich helfe mir, ich habe mir die Grenze genommen, ich helfe mir zu stellen, ich habe die Rüte auf und fühle mich alles in der Frau an. Und dann habe ich gesagt, ich fahre euch heute, wir haben mit dem Karten zu tun, und ich habe den Sohn gesagt, ich habe eine Frage für dich, ich habe gesagt, du kennst Jesus? Oh ja, ja, ich kenne ihn, ja. Ich habe gesagt, oh, wirklich, wie? Well, you know, I grew up in a, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a house like that, ne? Huh? Oh, I said, so have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Oh, we're not going to get into religion. He closed the window. He heard of Jesus, but he didn't know about Jesus. <laughs> It's very, very, very sad. Very sad. Um, and that's, that's what's very, very important. That we, that we know who Jesus is. And if you want to turn... In your Bibles to John chapter 20. Chapter 20 verse 15 and 16. And I want to read a couple of verses and then and then I'll get into my testimony. And please, and I hope you're not going to get bored with me. Um, and there it says like this. In verse 15 and 16. Jesus sprach zu ihr, Frau, warum weinest du? Wem suchest du? Sie meint, er sei der Gartner und sprach zu ihm, Herr, wenn du ihn weggetragen hast, so, so sage mir, wo du ihn hingelegt hast und ich will ihn holen. Jesus sprach zu ihr, Maria. Da wandte sie sich um und sprach zu ihm, Rabuni, das heißt Meister. Was ich mir ein Bild, und jetzt wurde ich mir vom Bild merken, da. Aus Maria, bis sie in Krieg stand, aus Jesus starben dort, aus Jesus am Krieg starb. Und aus dem sie starben, wie er kann krank mit Feuer, weil Maria sich gegangen hat. Maria macht alleine wie der Früh, wo, die, wo Jesus sieben bei sich erst darüber gedreht hat, nicht so? Weil alle weit nicht. Und was passiert? Der starb und der begruben den. Ich stelle mich vor, dass Maria, der erst hat ihre Knie hingefallen und der erst tot gebrochen und der hat gesagt, mein Jesus ist gestorben. Mein Jesus ist nicht tot. In the third morning she ran. I'm sorry, I, I started to speak German. And, and you know, so she, she, ran, she ran to the grave and first thing in the morning and she said, She, no, she was looking for Jesus the first thing in the morning. And, and, and because she, she was thinking this, and I just put, it, I just put this in my, in my heart, and, and I try to understand it, what she was thinking, how she's looking at it. And she's like, my Jesus is dead, and I can't believe, like, am I supposed to fall into the old life again? Well, like, without Jesus, what if, what, I don't want to go back to the old life. I want to stay in the new life. 
And we're like, where's my Jesus? What if I have to slide back into the old life? That's how I look into it. That that's what happened there. And then for all of a sudden, Jesus stood behind her because he knew. He knew how she felt. He knew how she felt. And Jesus is always there for us. He knows how we feel. And he knew how she felt. And he was there. And she says, and he says, Mary, why are you crying? And when she turned around, she's like, that is Jesus. And he was alive. Is your Jesus alive? Does he live? That, that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Because I can tell you one thing. Jesus lives in my heart. Not because I put him in there, but because God transformed my life and he came in there. And I praise God for that today. Anyways, um, I was born and raised in Mexico in Camp 117. It was called the Little State. And uh, um, from as little as I can remember, I lived in sin. I did everything that you could think of. I was stealing, I was smoking, and I was drinking. And from the house that I was living, that I was, that was raised, you know, I didn't learn much better. My mom, she tried to, to tell me that I wasn't supposed to drink or smoke. But what are you going to do? My dad did. He smoked, he drank. Why wouldn't I? And... Uh, so I lived a really bad life, and, I, and, and I'm not going to tell you so much about how bad I was. I will share a little bit about what I went through and how I lived. Then I want to share how God called me. Then I want to share how God changed me and gave me new life. How many of you have heard my testimony? Can you please raise your hand? How many have not heard it? Oh, there's a few yet, so it pays to, that pays, yeah. Um... But anyways, um, so I was never at home. I was always gone. I would always make it very hard for my mom. She was always running around looking for me. And I would be going to other places and buying cigarettes and just doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. And I was 14, 15 years old. And sometimes I would come home at 12, at 1 o'clock in the morning. I would come home at 1 o'clock in the morning and just party and and I, I was 14 years old when I bought myself a TV. I had a black and white TV. And I'm not saying that TV is wrong if you use it for the right thing. But I was using it for the wrong thing. And, and we can use anything for the wrong thing, right? And, and uh, But anyway, so I was watching all the movies that you can get, you know, like from pornography, from killing, from, you know, divorce, uh, uh, from... Uh, uh, romance and, and all those things, you know, like uh, and, and witchcraft and whatever, like, and I, I just really enjoyed that. And so, anyway, so when I got sick, when I became 16 years old, I had an accident with a bunch of soldiers. There was a truck filled with soldiers. There were seven, 21 soldiers on that truck. And I had an accident with him. And three got killed. One died later and 17 were injured. If I'm saying it right. And uh, so that was that was not a good feeling. Being in an accident and seeing 21 soldiers just spread out around you laying on the highway. And uh, so anyways, they took me to jail. So I was in jail for a couple of days and I thought, man, this is good. I'm going to tell my friends that I was in jail. I'm going to get out and I'm going to brag about it. That, you know, 16-year-old fella, I got, got to put me behind bars. What do you think? Then for all of a sudden, it took me to the big city. And there was a chance that I was going to be locked up for 20 years. Oh, I didn't want to break to my friends anymore. I didn't want to tell them that I was not behind bars. That was not the case anymore. And uh, so it, it, it was bad. So, But I was in jail for four months and three days. And then finally, the Lord... Uh, brought me out of there through people and churches have prayed for me my mom has prayed for me she came to jail and she would talk to me about the gospel she would share the story with me from the lost son she would share the story with me from from Jacob she would share the story with me from um, Peter how Peter was in jail and how the angels came into jail and, and, and took him out of jail and uh, 
she would share those stories with me. And, and you know, my mom, <clears throat> she always read the Bible. And she believed in the Word of God. And she, and she was a person that would go, always go to church. And she was taught that you cannot know if you're saved. But I can tell you one thing. My mom loved the Lord. Just because I still believe that my mom, she was a born-again Christian. Just she was told you cannot say that, right? And because the way she was, the love that was in her, and how she put up with dad, and how many times she sat around the table and just was crying and praying that God would change his life and that that God would maybe just even just take her out of this life that she didn't have to see it anymore. The one thing that hurt me, that my mom said to me one day, and it was true. She said to me, Clues, I wish that you would never be able to get married. Because the life that I was living, um, she said, if, if you're going to be, I can see you're going to fall into the same hole that dad is. And I wish you could never get married. And if you do get married, she says, I wish I could be at your wedding. And after your wedding, I could just pass on. I didn't have to see how mistreated, how bad treated your family and your wife are going to get. What kind of a life they're going to have. And I thank God today. And I, and I really hope that God is going to give me wisdom and power that I can stay standing and go forward. My mom has never said it much because my mom is a type of woman. You keep it in here. You don't. You don't uh, lift somebody up. You don't. Uh, you know. Uh, you don't brag about somebody, right? That's that's the way my mom was raised, and that's the way she is. But I know, I know she's very happy to see her son today. I know she is, and I can talk to her. I can talk with her. We can talk about scripture. We can talk about the word of God. Sometimes I'm on the phone with my mom for two, three hours, and just talking about the word of God, and it's amazing, and I love it. And, and I'm the only son that she has that she can really talk about the Word of God. I'm not saying that my other brothers are not um, born-again Christians. But they are not, uh, they're just not me. They're different. And so I can talk to her about a lot of things. And, and we've had a lot of good times. And I praise God today that... I've shared scripture with her. We've, won we've gone through the Bible. We talked about things. And today if you'd ask my mom, do you believe that you can know where you're standing? Yes. Because she can see it in the Bible. And she says, one time she said to me, Nick, you know, she says, man, she says, uh, ever since she got born again, she says, my eyes have just opened up so much more. I can see and understand the Bible so much better, she says. And it's not because of me, but it's because of God, what God did. And because she sees the fruit coming out of her son. Not because of me, but because of God. Because I want to make one thing very clear. It's not me. I did not change myself. God changed me. Jesus Christ did. The blood of the Lamb changed me. And uh, anyways, so I was in jail there. and She came talk to me lots. And then... Uh, one day, you know, I was so, I was missing my family and I was missing home and I wanted to go home so bad. And I just, I knew, I knew what prayer was a little bit. So one day I fell on my knees out in the middle of the yard and I didn't care who was looking, you know. And I just poured out everything I had. I confessed all my sins to God and I said, here it is. And I want to live a better life. And from now I'm going to live for you if you're going to save me out of here. If you're going to just pull me out of here and put me home. The amazing thing is, a couple hours later, my mom and dad were there. They came and picked me up. My dad was drunk. My mom. So basically, my mom, my, si my sister was there. She picked me up. My mom and dad and my sister were there. But my dad, I, I, I guarantee you, he doesn't even remember getting me out of there. But anyways, and then they came and picked me up, and they took me home. I got out. And it didn't take long. You know, I thought, oh, yeah, now I'm going to be a better person, you know. I'm going to make myself better because that's what I thought. You know, that's how it works. I tried that twice in my life. Didn't work. Anyways, and what happened is because I poured out everything I had. I asked for forgiveness. 
uh, you know, for, uh, asked for forgiveness to God, and I gave her like put, poured everything out in front of God, and He forgave me for everything He did, but I never asked Him to save me. And so, anyways, what happened there is the devil. He had to leave my heart. He went out. He went into the wilderness. Turned around. Came back with seven demons that were worse than him. They came into my heart. And before he was only standing in there, now he was sitting in there. And he controlled my life completely. And that's where it started. I started getting bad. I started getting into uh, adultery, um, not adultery, um, bad things anyways. I was starting to get into bad things. And uh, today if I think about it, how it hurts me thinking of how many women I've destroyed, how many hearts I have destroyed. I have literally pulled women out of a Christian home and just completely destroyed their hearts. And it hurts me. I wish I would have never done that. Then I went to Canada because there was safety reasons. Because it was the accident I had with the soldiers. Uh, they, there was a chance that they were probably going to kill me. So I had to leave Mexico. And I had to come to Canada. And I thought, yes! Now I can come to Canada. I'm gone away, away from mom and dad. I was 17 years old. And I can go to Canada. I'm, I'm going to be by myself. And I can do what I want. And I did. I lived that out. What I learned in that TV. Everything. And... Uh, so anyways, and then here in Canada, I, we started going to bars. I've hang, I hung up, and I'm like, and, and please don't understand me wrong. I'm just trying to share a little bit about who I was and then what God did with me. And so we hung out lots in stripper bars and different bars, and, and we just partied our life through. And a lot of times, you know, like we, we partied, all, partied through all our money and just didn't have nothing anymore to... To buy not even food sometimes. You know, there's a couple of times that happened that for three days I could I didn't even have food. I couldn't eat. I had to hunger, starve because I blew everything in partying. And I wouldn't learn. And and you know what the interesting thing is, is there was times that I made like eight, nine thousand dollars a month, and I blew all of it. And uh, um that's very, very, very sad. We drove around town, broke windows, had to each, you know, me and my friend, we had a pistol and we driving around and we were shooting through windows, you know, and just breaking the windows on vehicles and stuff. And, and uh, one time we wanted to steal a pop machine and we loaded it and then we wanted to leave the yard and then fell off the back and we got caught on video camera. They were looking for us all over town, wanted to put us in jail. And, but the next day we left up north and went up north and they didn't catch us. And I praise God that they didn't, but maybe it would have been good if they did. But anyways, the guy that I was hanging out with, he didn't believe in God. Me and him, we had an argument a couple of times. And I said, is God? And he says, no, there's no God. I said, yes, there is. He says, do you believe in God? I said, yes, I believe in God. And, I, and he didn't. And he said, you know what? He says, if there's a God, he says, you know, I can prove to you there's no God. He says, because one day I said to God, if you're real and if there's a God, why don't you strike me right here with a lightning strike? And prove to me that you're God. And he didn't. He says, there's no God. I said, oh, yes, there is a God. He says, well, if you believe in God, why don't you live for him, he says. I said, I don't know. But I know there's a God. Because my mom, she always, she taught me that there was a God. And that got planted into me when I was little. My mom, she taught me how to pray. And, and my mom, she always told me about God. And my mom says today, if she thinks about it and she, she thinks through that I was the child that had the most questions about God when I was small. And it's amazing. And it was maybe for a reason, right? But anyways, and my mom, she sent me a Bible after she wanted me to read in the Bible. And she called me and she wrote me, she wrote me a letter. I read that here Two years ago, no, a year and a half ago, maybe I read that letter because I was running through the house and just, you know, just going through the house. I was looking for something else and for all of a sudden I found this old letter and my name on it. And she wrote that seven years ago. And she wrote in that letter, you know, Nick, she says, 
I can just hear when I talk to you that you have literally just thrown your life completely away from God. You've absolutely turned cold to God. And she says, I wish that you could that you could accept the Lord, that you could become born again. And in German we would say, that did you wish to be here? When I read that letter now, tears were running across my cheeks because now I understood what she was going through and how she was thinking. I could understand her now. Back then, if I would have wrote, if I would have read it, I didn't even read it. She did send it to me. I got it, looked, opened up, looked at it, closed it, threw it away. Didn't care. And she called me one time. She sent me a Bible, and she wanted me to read in the Bible. She wanted me to read the uh, the chapter from Luke chapter fifteen, verse eleven from thirty two about the lost son, and I didn't. And she wanted me to read in the Bible. I says, "Mom." I said, why are you even sending me a Bible? I don't believe in the Bible. The Bible, that's a book that somebody made up. It's a story. It's whatever. I said, I don't believe in the Bible. Can you imagine how my mom felt? Can you just imagine? If I think about it today, like, what was I thinking? Talking to my mom like that. The Bible says the children are supposed to respect their mom. And my mom, she's always loved me and she's always respected me. More than I have her. I cannot say that my mom has ever done anything that would be non-Christian. But anyways, she wanted me to turn around. That fella that said to me there was no God, he got killed a little later. And he said to me once before he died, this was a couple of months before he died, didn't know that he was going to die. And he said, um, he said to me, if I ever die, then I want you guys to come to my grave and drink beer on my grave and pour beer out of my grave. Okay, sounds good. We're going to do that. And that's what we did. When he, when he got killed and he died, we, they brought him to Ontario here. And so once they were done burying him, Funeral was over, people were gone. We were at the grave drinking beer, pouring beer. And we were staying at a guy's place in Ontario here. That wasn't a Christian at the time. Today he is, and he's in this church. I praise God for that brother. He's been a big courage to me in my Christian walk. And the guy says today, when I was walk watching you guys, you just lost a friend sitting in a hot tub and drinking beer all night. Didn't even care. Lost a friend a couple of days ago, and that's what we did. Didn't care. Oh, yes, just another friend. There's lots of them out there, right? That's what we thought, but we never gave it a second thought. Where is he? Where did he go? And I had another friend um, that introduced me to holding loads of coke from Mexico to Canada. We went to Mexico. The car got ready, the plates got ready, that was under my name, everything was ready to go, but the load didn't get ready. We were waiting there for three, four nights for that load to get ready. And the load, for some reason, didn't get ready. My mom and dad found, they found out, okay, we were in Mexico, and then we left, and then we went to Canada, and they're like, well, how come it took you guys so long to get from Mexico to Canada? Like, it's a week already. Now you just finally got there? I told them, well, you know, we went to Chihuahua, look at Pancho Villa's house. I said, you know, oh, okay. Now, a couple of years ago, we were in Mexico, and we went, we, you know, with the whole family, went to Chihuahua, and, and wanted to go to the Pancho Villa's house, and my brother says, well, you know where it is? I said, no, I don't. He says, yes, you do. You just said, that you, you and that fellow were there, remember? I said, no, we weren't. Well, you said you were there. Ah, I said, I remember. Yeah, I was lying to you, I said. That was coming, it came out. I lied to them. And we were going to hold drugs to Canada. And for all of a sudden, that friend of mine, that the, 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 me and the guy that were going to do this, he saved today too. I praise God. He got saved two months before I did. He accepted the Christ and became a Christian. And he's a brother in, in, in Christ today too. He's actually going to Africa on a mission work here pretty soon. And uh, anyways, for all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, he comes and, and, and he grabs me by the arm and he says, he says, uh, Clues, he says, we better leave because I have a bad feeling about this whole situation. Let's leave. And we packed up and we were gone. We left. We went back to Canada. But you know, 
I didn't even think for a second what I was giving myself into. But today I see what happened there. God wanted to use me. And he knew. I guarantee you if that would have happened. If that load would have gotten ready. I would be behind bars today. I can guarantee you that. God knew that. He said this is. He said to me that was so strange. He says this is so strange. It's never happened before. He says you know I go there. And they pack it up. In two hours I'm gone. And I'm back home. He did this lots. And. Uh, and I praise God today. That they didn't. They never caught him. And he got saved, and he's free from it, and now he's working for God. But I guarantee you that I would have gotten caught if I would have done it. So there I can just, you know, tell you a little bit about who I was. And there's things, like I've said before, there's things I will not share. There's things I will not mention or say because I can't. And, but that gives you a small idea. And then uh, um, I met my wife over the time. And I never seen her. I seen never seen her in my life. And I met her, and and we fell in love. And and I got her heart. And the reason I got her heart because her dad didn't have her heart. And that's why that's one very important thing I want to say today, fathers. Do you have your girls' heart? Do you have your children's hearts? If you don't, you better work at it. I'm telling you one thing. I am trying everything I can. That I'm going to be able to keep my children's hearts. I'm not saying that I will be able to. But why don't we try our best. To keep our children's hearts. Because if our girls. If your daughters and my daughter. Are not going to have a safe place. In daddy's heart. You know what's going to happen. And there's going to be. There, there's going to come a guy along. A cool fella like I was. And is going to open his arms and just, you know, like uh, show him a little bit of love. They're just going to throw themselves into their arms. And then the guys can do with them what they want. That's how they are. Because if the father doesn't love his daughter and the daughter ha doesn't have a safe place in the father's heart, she will find a safe place. And she will find it at the wrong place. And one thing I can say that girls, if, you're, if there is any single girls here, if you're looking for the guy that's always cool and mean, and can always do everything, the, the, the big guy, and, and you know, and always talks everybody else down, I just want to tell you one thing, if you're going to get married to him, that's exactly what he's going to do to you, that's exactly how he's going to treat you, so you better think about it, if you have a Christian man that you're going to marry, if he's born again or not, think about it twice, I can tell you one thing, if I had to choose Today again to get married, to find a girl. I would make sure that she would be born again. And if not, I wouldn't marry her. And some people, they think, well, you know what? I'm going to marry this. I love that girl so much. And I'm going to marry that girl. I'm going to turn her into a Christian. Well, you know what? I've seen so many places. Uh, I've seen that so often. It's just the other way around. That the Christian that marries the non-Christian becomes a non-christian she you know he'll he'll or she she'll actually follow the non-christian person before Be why because that's just how it works because the one thing i can tell you is we do not have to run around and look for the devil he's there that's why i'm saying take it serious moms moms and fathers pray for your children pray for your grandchildren Pray for your great-grandchildren. And pray for your great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren. And don't quit praying. And have your children's hearts. And teach them how to win their heart. So that they can teach their children. So that they can win their children's hearts and their children's hearts. It's important. Very important. I almost dare myself to say that I'm first-generation Christian. But I can't quite because my mom, she was a Christian, but she was the type of Christian that was taught to be a hidden Christian. She, you know, had to be quiet. And I don't blame my mom for that because it wasn't her. What do you do if, you, if, you, if that's how you're being taught? But anyways, <clears throat> then one day I ran into a fellow out of feedlot and he talked to me about scripture. 
About a week later, I ran to the same guy and, and a different feedlot, and he talked to me about scripture. And then about another two weeks, I met him at a car wash, and he talked to me about scripture, and I'll tell you what, I did not like it. And he kept preaching to me. And anyways, um, and then later on, I phoned this one guy. He had cancer, and he, he, he was a Christian, and he was going to pass away. But anyways, I, gonna, I was going to phone him because I knew him. I called him up and, and I was going to encourage him, but he encouraged me more than I did him. And I was a non-Christian trying to encourage a Christian. And, and that didn't work very good. But anyways, I called him up and he said to me, Clues, he says, um, have you thought about if you die, where you going to go? I said, uh, no, not really. He says, you know what? And you know, and, and, and you know what the, the good thing is? He didn't say, you know, well, if you die, you're going to go to hell. He said to me, you know, well, if I'm, I'm telling you this, he says, well, if I'm going to die in a couple of days, he says, I'm going to pass away in a couple of days. And once I'm going to die, he said, I'm going to be in heaven. I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to walk with John, with Peter. And I'm going to ask Peter how it went, or how it, go, how it went to walk on water, how it felt. And he says, and I'm going to be in heaven. And I'm going to be singing with all those angels. Can you just imagine? Don't you want that too? And tears are running across my cheeks. And I said, yes, I want that too, but I can't. He says, why can't you? I said, I've made it too bad. I was too bad. I, I've, I've, I've crossed the line. I, I, it's, for me, it's too late, I said. <laughs> and he said, oh, no, 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 no. He says, close. Exactly for a sinner like you, that's what Jesus Christ died on the cross for. To save a guy like you. He wants to save your soul. All you do have you have to do is accept it. I said, I want to, but I can't. And we hung up the phone. And I'm pretty sure he prayed for me. And that fellow to two, that brother today that's in this church too. I found that so amazing. He prayed and fasted for me. That he wanted God to change my life. And if anybody in here believes that prayer is not being answered, then I just want to tell you, after I'm going to be done telling you my testimony tonight, if you will not be able to see what it means, prayer being answered, then I don't know when you ever will. And, in and there was a church in Mexico where my brother Frank uh, announced in the church to pray for me. And then one day I was in Mexico and he invited me to church, basically dragged me to church, wanted me to come to church. Okay, so I went to church. And I come into church and, you know, like in this, I think, you know, that was just the wrong time for me to be there, you know. The reason why I'm saying that is because on the, on the bulletin, was it a bulletin? Bull, bulletin? On the bottom there was my name, Clus Veens, written down on there. And I'm like, what? What are you doing for this guy? And I asked him, you know, my reading wasn't good enough. And I said, I asked him, well, well, why is my name on here? He says, well, the, whose ever name is on there, that's what we're praying for. You're praying for me in this church? Yeah, we're praying for you, you know. Like, I, and I was angry. I, I was mad at him. I, I hated my brother for that. that he, he, he put my name in that church and, and all those people knew like who I was and they wanted to pray for me, you know. I hated my brother. And I said to my mom, I said, you know, my brother, if he's going to come into our yard one more time, I'm going to kill him. No, you won't. I said, well, yes, I will. No, you won't. And I was, I was, not, a, I was not a nice person. And then, but that Sunday after the church, after the church was done, I went and got me some cocaine. I got me a couple of bottles of whiskey and I got drunk and I got high. And then I came back into one camp and I come driving into the camp and there was a bunch of youth there. I come jumping out of the truck and I was mad and I fell right on my knees in front of the whole youth like this. And I said, you know what? I said, you know, in that church, they're praying for me like that. And I said, you know what? When, I wanna, when I'm when i going to need people to pray for me, I'll let them know. You think that would ever happen? And those all those youth and people around me, you know, standing there, they, they just thought, you know, like, I think you're seriously a guy that needs to be prayed for. And there were no Christians there. They were all Christians. You know, so, so all I'm saying is, you know, I did crystal meth and I did cocaine and, and, and I've, and I've drank booze and I've smoked wheat and I don't know if I said that already but anyways so you got a small idea of what I came out of what God changed me off of and so anyways then one day 
I was driving down Highway 21, and I was going south, coming from the north, and it was about around 9 o'clock, and it was dark outside. And then for all of a sudden, there was a light that came from heaven and just lit everything up around me that I could see just like during the day. And I got so scared and such a fear went through me. I was filled with goosebumps. And I thought, this is the end of the world. But then the light went, was, like, was gone. And the light came from behind me. And the reason I know that is because I could see the pipes, or the, the, the shadow of my pipes in front of me on the highway. And so... And then I thought about it. If that would have been the end of the world. My mom always told me that one day the, the world's going to end. And, and then I'm going to be. And she told me you're going to be standing in front of the judgment day. And you're going to answer for everything you did wrong. And if you will not. She said if you will not accept Christ. If you're not going to be cheering me like I said. That's what she always used. She said you're going to go to hell. And I said to my mom. Well then I guess I was an unlucky one. And... Uh, I was a bull rider for uh, a couple of years and a couple of times I just about got killed. The one time I got hurt so bad that I was spitting, spitting blood for a couple of weeks and the one time, you know, I got hung up and, you know, like, and we got between the fence, like here was the bull and here was the fence and my head was between the fence and the bull and I was back and forth and there was only God that saved me there and once I was done, the blood was running down my cheeks on both sides. I could have gotten killed there. You think I had enough? No. Was I scared? No. Was I thinking about going to hell, dying like that? Mm -mm. Never crossed my mind. Um, but it has crossed my mind sometimes, but not there. But anyways, when that light ha hit, I thought, now it's the end of the world. And then when it did, it wasn't the end of the world, thank God. And then I thought, what if it would have been? I would have been lost forever, forever. And I started thinking about it. And anyways, um, then later, uh, later on, I don't know how it happened. I can't tell you that. But slowly God started working in my life from there on. And, uh, you know, so here and there I would run into people that would share the gospel with me, would talk to me. And then I started thinking about, we were married. I married me and my wife, we got married in Madison Had a justice of peace married us without her mom and dad's permission. And I kind of regret it today, but, you know, what did we do? Did we did it, and we're not going to turn it back, so now we just got to look forward, right? And uh, anyways, um, we were married, and so we didn't live a very good life. I treated my wife really bad. and My wife was at home, and I was in the U.S. in stripper bars, and, and that's... that's um, how I love my wife, you know, didn't love her at all. I hurt my wife terribly. And uh, if it wouldn't have been for God that he would have saved our lives, today we would not be together. I know for a fact that we wouldn't be. And so anyways, then I don't know, was it me or was it her? But somebody anyways brought it up, let's go to church. Like, why wouldn't we go to church for a minute? So we went to church and we came to church and I... And I sat down in the, in the seat and, and the preacher started preaching and it started hitting me. And I was starting to be, see, begin to see um, the love of Jesus. It was talking to me. And I was crying there, this big tough bull rider, you know, this cool dude that, that knew, that, that, that thought he, he was everything. You know, he was sitting in church crying. And it was touching me and I started to, just to see that I got to change my life. What do I got to do? So we talked talk to the preachers and asked them if we could get baptized, you know, if we could, you know, like join the church and whatever. Okay, so they talked about it and yeah, well, they gave us permission, yeah, we could and whatever. So then the baptiz baptism classes started and so we had two baptism classes already and the third one was going to come. So this was Thursday on Friday was baptism classes and Thursday I was supposed to go to the U.S. with a load of cows and I did. So I met a fellow there and I ran into him and I said, and he asked me, so when are you going home tomorrow morning? I said, well, 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so why are you going home so early? I said, well, you know, we have baptism classes at home, and if I don't go early, we won't make it. Oh, he says, uh, uh, so why are you getting baptized? I said, because I want to change my life. Oh, really? Why do you want to change your life? You know, because I said, because the life I'm living, I'm sick and tired of it. Sick and tired of it. 
Oh, that's interesting. He said, so do you believe that a person can know where he's standing? Oh, says, oh, yes, you can. Well, how do you believe that? How do you know that? I said, you mean, because you know why? Because if I died right now today, I'd go straight to hell. You believe that? I said, yep. Huh, that's amazing. He says, did you understand that? He said, you know what? I want to I want to ride with you tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, okay? Next day, we went. His truck, he, Him and his truck and me and mine had two-way radios. And so we talked about, started talking about the Word of God, and he started sharing, and he started talking about how God changed his life, how Jesus came in his life, and how he accepted the Lord. And after that, uh, I didn't say nothing. And he got the two radios, hello, you there? I didn't say nothing. He asked again, are you still there? Are you listening? I didn't say nothing. He thought I hung up on him, and I turned the radio off. And then for all of a sudden, he says, are you there? Hmm. Then for all of a sudden, I got the mic, and I just squeezed it, so he knew I was there. For all of a sudden, I got talking, and I says, have you ever had that? Have you got a big ball in your throat? You can't talk? He says, yeah, I have. I said, well, that's what happened to me. And I said, it's, it's a wonderful story. And then he asked, he asked me, so close, can you, t can you tell me? He says, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I said, nope. Never have, but I want to. He says, really? And what are you waiting for? I said, well, you know, I got a little problem here, a little there, and I got to fix up some here, and I got to confess this and this and this, and now when I got all that done, then I'm going to go, and then I'm going to, yeah, do it. Oh, boy, he says, if you're going to wait for that, it's never going to happen. I'm like, well, well, why not? He says, that's not what Jesus wants. He doesn't want you to take your sins and go and, and, and you know, like, and, and, and uh, put grass over him and, you know, like, and, and uh, and, you know, like put them in, in a dirt hole or whatever, you know. He wants you to bring everything you got, bring it to the cross, tell him what you did and tell him who you are and ask him to save you and to come into your heart. I'm like, wow. And the light just went on for the first time in my life. I could see. I'm like, wow. That's true. I can see that. He says he died for your sins. He, that's, that's why he died. To pay for that. Wow. And we separated. He went his way. I went my way. And he said to me, if you ever do it, call me, he says. I didn't call him right away. But anyways, the Spirit of God began to work in me. And But you know what? Like I said, you don't have to run around and look for the devil. He was there too. And he, were, he did his job. But I praise God today that, that God has mercy and grace. But anyways, from there I went home, and then from home we went to baptism classes. I went in my semi-truck, my wife went in a car. And uh, she followed me, and on the way out there, between Colde and Tabor, I had such a struggle that I went through already. And um, just fighting the devil. And I wanted this so bad, but I just, for some reason, I just couldn't do it. And I said, to, and, I, and I started praying, I said, God... I said, can you help me? I want to do this, but I don't know how. And I want to do this. Can you just help me that I can do it? And I went through Tabor. And once I got through Tabor, and the devil came up to me. He said, if you're going to do that, then you have to lose all the women, all the booze, and you cannot. Like, and, and the Spirit of God came, but then, I will, then you will get peace. And the devil came up to me again. and said, oh, well, if you, no, you can't do that. You know, like, you're going you're gonna to give all that up, but then you will get peace, the Spirit of God said. I don't know how many times that happened, and for all of a sudden, I was done. I got on my knees in my truck, with, on one knee like this, and, and here's a seat sitting on the seat with one knee on the, on the floor, and, and just, I, I don't know how I was going down the highway, I was just crying, and I just cried out to God, and I said, I said, God, I said, I am a sinner, and I have sinned against you. And I have sinned against heaven, and I am not even worth to call you Jesus, I said. And I said, God, I said, I have sinned. I am a murderer and I am a thief and I am a smoker and a drug addict and a drinker and an adulteress. I am it all. And I said, I have sinned so bad. And I said, God, can you forgive me my sins? And I said, God, can you save my soul? And I said, Jesus, can you please come into my heart and just clean it all out and rip all the chains out that are in there and just clear me from that spider web that I'm... That I'm involved in can you please save me lord please lord jesus i said god jesus 
Come into my heart and save my soul. And here's my heart. I said, Jesus, here is my heart in your hands. And you can do with it what you want. It's yours. From now on, I want to live for you and do whatever you want me to do. And that's when the biggest and the best thing happened in my life. And I asked God, can I please have the Spirit of God? Can you please fill me with the Spirit of God? And He did. And that's, what the, that's the biggest and the best moment I ever experienced in my life. And the Spirit of God came in me. I could just feel it. And there was, it was like there was somebody beside me, standing beside me and saying, You know, Cluth Diaz, you are forgiving for everything. Walk away and you're free. You're free. You're saved. And I stood up from my knees and I was wiping tears and I could just feel the peace and I could just feel the joy and I could just feel the happiness. And you know what? I still feel that today. And that's where I got saved. And you know what's the most beautiful thing about all that? We went to baptism classes and after we were done, my wife jumped in the truck and we drove off. And I started sharing with my wife what I did. I started telling my wife how, I changed, how God changed my life and how I gave my, my heart to Jesus. And she turned herself into the seat to me. And, and for all of a sudden, she just looked at me like a little child. And she just said, you know, as close, I can see you have peace and I want that too. What do I do? She says, as little as I knew about it. I had no Bible. We had no Bible. But as little as I knew, I said, you know, okay, we turn off the highway and with a big truck and we got on our knees in the bunk and I said okay this is what you do you know I explained as little as I know you you confess your sins to Jesus and you Jesus and you ask him to come into your life and to save your soul and she did and she got saved too and there was two souls saved that night and that is the happiest moment the best moment of our lives that ever happened and from there on, we've been able to grow in Christ and come forward and serve the Lord. It's not always easy, but it's always fun. And because God, because He's promised us very clearly, he said, I will, he said, I will be with you until the end of the days. And He's always been there. He's never failed once. I have failed Jesus, but He's never failed me. And He will never fail us. And there's, there's only, there's a couple of things I would like to mention is this. And it's probably going to sound, it's probably going to sound very, maybe a little bit mean or strict. But if you are here today, somebody, and you are not a Christian, you are not born again, you don't have Jesus. The one question I want to ask you, why do you come to church? If you are sitting here Sunday after Sunday, Keeping the seat warm, that's not going to bring you into heaven. I can tell you one thing, if it just hurts me to see how those people make the real Christians look bad. And I would just encourage each and every one of you, whoever is not born again or a Christian, if he wants to give his life to Christ today, why don't you? What is holding you back? Why are, you, why are you not saved? Why don't you have Jesus? Because I will tell you one thing. I've never regretted it one moment that I accepted Christ and that He saved my life. You know what hurt, hurt me really bad? A couple of weeks ago, we had a revival, revival meetings in Alberta. And there was the fella in the church or in that, in that revival, revival meeting meeting that talked to me about scripture. When the, the service was over, he walked out, his wife after him. I ran after him and I, I called his name. I said, hey, I said, wait. I said, where are you going? I want to say hi to you. And he looked at me as he did not want to see me. I'm like, what's going on with this fella? And I said, what's wrong? How's it going? This is not going too good. I said, why not? No, I will not explain the situation I will not tell it but anyways things are not going too good and he looked at me he says you know what close he says I'm just gonna tell you how I feel and he says I I wish I would have never shared scripture with you I said why 
Patience, I just wish I would never have. I, would, I wish I would never, never gotten you into it. And they said, I thank God that you did. I thank God that you did. And I thank you so much that you did. And you know, like, and, and, and God has worked in my life because of that. And I said, you cannot hang your head down. He told me the situation they were in. And it, was a, it is a serious situation. We need to pray for him. But he was, he was so discouraged that he was even telling me, I wish he would have never shared, script, shared scripture with me. I tried to encourage him. I gave him a hug. And we left. And the next day he called me and he says, you know what? He says, I was unhappy and I was discouraged, but you have no idea how much courage that gave me. You came running out the door and the church was still going when we left. And, and you come running out the door and you call my name and you just wanted to talk to me. And, you, and that, you, that you took the time to talk to me, that you showed me that you, that you loved me. He says, I just want to tell you and thank you so much that you did that because it meant so much to me that we went home happy. We need each other. We cannot be just one Christian by himself out there somewhere because somewhere along the line we will get discouraged and we need each other and we need to help each other and, and have a relationship with each other. But it, I felt bad for the brother that he felt like that. But anyways, so like I'm saying, if there's anyone here that has not accepted Christ, what's holding you back? Why are you not doing it? Why are you not accepting it? What are you, lo what are you losing? Like, what do you got to lose? Because I tell you one thing, if you're going to accept Christ, you're going to go to heaven. And I'll tell you one thing, I do not want to go to heaven because of that I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven because I want to see my father. I want to be with my father. I just want to see my father. I want to see the one who died for me. I want to see the one who shed his blood for me. I want to just kneel myself down in front of him and just worship him. That Jesus that died for my sins shed his blood. I want to see him. I want to be with him and I want to worship him and I want to praise him and I want to lift his name. Don't you want to do it too? And there's so many people today that they back into heaven. They want to back into heaven. What I mean by that is this. They're, they, 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 they're, do, they're, they're literally doing this. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. And that's not the way to go to heaven. The Bible says, Jesus says, if anybody has put the hand on the plow and looks back, is not word worthy the kingdom of God, right? What I'm trying to say is, I was going the dark way, Jesus turned me around, now I'm going to heaven. I'm not looking back, I'm going straight to hell. Through the grace of God, I'm going to get there. And through the grace of God, I'm saved today and I'm a child of God. And all the honor and glory goes to the Lord Jesus. And maybe you will bow your heads with me and pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you saved my soul. And I thank you for all the souls that you saved. And, and Lord, I thank you for the people that have prayed for me. The people that have took the time and prayed for me. Because Lord, I know those not the people that gossiped about me. That's a, the people that prayed for me, that's why I'm here today. And all those other people that are here today, all those Christians and saints, Lord, all those people, those holy people that are here, I thank you for them and I wish you would make more of them because we need more of them. And I understand what you're saying, Lord, that the, that, that the, the, the crop is big, but there's very, very few harvesters out there. Please, Lord, send more harvest, harvesters. And please, Lord, give me wisdom and power that I can continue worshiping you and serving you. And please, Lord, make more of them. And if there's anyone here tonight that is, does not know you, Jesus, please touch his heart and let him know who you are. And, and just let him experience the Spirit of God. Oh, Lord, be with us and be with this church. And I've been blessed so much through this church, Lord. And I thank you so much for this church. I thank you so much for the people that are Christians in here and that are serving you. And I wish that you would give them power that they could continue serving you. 
I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I wish you all the best. And God bless you guys. Thank you.